Welcome to this video. In this video, you will be exposed to an introduction to construction management. The content of this video is prepared by Mohammed Zair. Mohammed is the founder of Zap Consultancy, a senior planning engineer and got his master's degree in the construction management and PhD candidate. He is a certified risk management professional, planning and scheduling professional, and certified cost professional. As a start, what is project management? Project management is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities to meet project requirements. The development of the project management plan is an iterative activity and is progressively elaborated throughout the project's life cycle. This is because of the high uncertainty. And what is a project? A project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service or result. Temporary because of the nature of projects indicates that a project has a definite beginning and end. And unique as no project is similar to other. For instance, developing a new product or service, designing a new transportation vehicle, constructing a building, merging two organizations and so forth. Effective project management helps individuals, groups, and public and private organizations to manage constraints such as cost, schedule, quality. However, the PM Book 6th edition added the scope and resources as other constraints. Project stakeholders may have different ideas as to what the successful completion of a project will look like and which factors are the most important. A stakeholder can be Employer, engineer, general contractor, subcontractors, suppliers, regulatory and approval agencies. Typical phases in construction projects are conceptual planning and feasibility studies, design and engineering, procurement, construction, startup and implementation, operation. On the x axis, the project time is presented and the level of influence on cost is presented in y-axis. The graph shows that the construction cost increases over the time. Also, the ability to modify decreases through the mentioned project phases. So, what is the difference between planning and scheduling? Planning is the thinking part which is the process of identifying all activities necessary to complete the project while scheduling is the process of determining the sequential order of activities, duration and computing dates of each activity using the tools such as Primavera or MS Project. There are many scheduling techniques such as Bar Chart, CPM that includes activity on arrow and activity on node, program evaluation and review technique, and line of balance. In order to start planning a project, there are some steps to follow. Firstly, Studying contract documents that consist of general conditions. There are many standard forms of contracts such as FIDIC, JCT, or AIA. Particular conditions. Project specifications. Tender drawings. Bill of quantities. Contract agreement. Addendums and amendments. All of these are contract documents. Secondly, Prepare a method statement showing construction phases, used resources, quality plan, safety plan, and the organization chart. Thirdly, develop a mobilization plan. This slide shows a mobilization plan for a project located in Egypt illustrating the construction team's location and the used cranes. Finally, prepare a project baseline. Typical steps for scheduling might be creating WBS to define the project listing project activities, sequencing the activities, estimating resources and duration of activities. Schedule calculation to define the critical path and perform the required leveling, cost estimating, budget developing. Creating work breakdown structure is the process of subdividing project deliverables and project work into smaller, more manageable components. But keep in mind that the lowest level work breakdown structure components are called work packages. In order to develop work breakdown structure, 
you can search for templates or decompose the project into smaller manageable parts. While decomposing the project, you must know that the top level of the work breakdown structure is the project title. The first level is most commonly the same as the project phases. The second and later levels break the project into smaller pieces. Some levels can be decomposed further than the others. The lowest level that the project manager will manage is called the work package. This work may be broken down again by the person completing the work. Note that there is a difference between activities and BOQ items. For example, concrete for slabs can be divided into smaller activities such as shuttering, steel reinforcement, pouring, or divided per floor. However, block works 25 cm and 12 cm thickness can be consolidated into one activity. So, BOQ can assist in developing the activity list. Precedence diagramming method includes four types of dependencies in sequencing activities which are finish to start, finish to finish, start to start, and start to finish. I will give you few seconds to think about real examples in the construction industry for these relationships. Well, trusses will be erected after casting the columns. Plumbing fixtures will be finished after finishing the ceramic tiles by one day. Plain concrete can start after four days of starting excavation. Finally, plastering activity shall be started to fix subframes after two days. In the previous examples, we used lags and leads. So, what are them? A lag is a duration inserted as a waiting time between activities, while lead is a negative lag that may be added to start an activity before the predecessor activity is completed. Duration estimating is a crucial step to estimate the project overall duration. This estimation can be done through expert judgment, analogous estimating, or parametric estimating. In the parametric estimating, Durations can be quantitatively determined by dividing the quantity of work to be performed by the productivity rate as per the shown equation. Again, project schedule development, an iterative process, determines plan starts and finish dates for project activities. The presented note shows that the starts are located in left and the finishes are located on the right. To calculate the late finish, add the activity duration to the late start and to calculate the early finish add the activity duration to the early start. Finally, total float is the maximum duration that the activity can be delayed without causing the delay in the final project completion. The total float can be calculated by subtracting the early finish from the late finish or the early start from the late start. While the free float is the maximum duration that the activity may be delayed without affecting the start of the successor activities. The free float can be calculated by subtracting the early start of the successor activity from the early finish of the activity. Thank you for watching this video. Please leave a comment below on what topic are you interested in and it will be uploaded soon. If you like this video, please like and share. See you.